Cool. Yep. All right. Yeah, ready to go? Yep. All right, cool. Hey everybody, this is that German guy Josh Ronquist and I'm here with Ryan from Miss Maya who's going to be doing a set here at Mill City Nights in Minneapolis, Minnesota, opening for August Burns Red. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Not only the winter weather, but it's nice here today. Much nicer than we've been used to the last week or so. Oh uh, yeah, it's been pretty bad weather in the Midwest pretty much all week. It's just finally starting to get a little better. Yeah, I feel like we've, it's been following us we've, since uh, the tour started. It's been like every everyday thing, but it was nice today. We saw the sun. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Yeah. In February. <laughs> uh, so, how has the tour been so far? Besides that, it's been good. Um, like I said, there's only been one day actually where the weather caught the show at a bad time, and even then. Um, even though it was in the middle of a snowstorm, it was still pretty good. It's been a great tour. Uh, it's a long one. We've already done almost two and a half weeks, I think, and we still have like at least four to go. So it's been good. Lots of shows. Spent almost a week in Canada already with another few days to go there and slowly making our way out to the uh, warm weather out west, hopefully. Oh, very nice. Yeah, this is a, such an awesome collection of bands that are going on on tour together. Uh, how did this come about? Uh, we actually have not toured with ABR in a venue setting before. Um, we, I think the only band we'd actually toured with, we toured with North Lane and played shows with them on Soundwave and we'd done a Warped Tour with all this Burnt Red, but we had never really done any club shows with either of them and ABR is one of the last bands on the, uh, on the list for us that we hadn't really done a venue tour with, so, uh. Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of popped up. Uh, the email came in, said that we were uh, that they would like to have us on a tour, and we jumped at the opportunity. Oh, that's very cool. It's such a cool collection being able to see Oxburn's Red and Miss Maya in the same yeah, show. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool tour. All the bands are great. Lots of cool guys. Um, pretty packed shows, which is always nice. It's what you always want to see. So it's been a, it's been a pretty good one. Yeah, with it being Friday night here in Minneapolis, I'm pretty sure it's going to sell out tonight. Yeah, the the weekend shows I, the weekday shows are great, but. Like everybody knows, the the weekend shows are where uh, stuff really happens, so it, it should really pack out tonight. There's a lot of room here, too, so I expect to see uh, quite a few people. Oh, definitely. I, th I think the capacity is around, like, 1,200 or something like that, so... We're going to have 1,200 circle hitters. Yeah, that'd be really nice, <laughs> especially around those black poles right yeah. on the side. Yeah, they're, uh, night makes it nice and easy for Levi to direct them where to go. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, of course, you guys are on tour uh, supporting your latest album, which came out last year. How's the reception been for it so far? It's been it's been really good. We we don't really have that much uh, to show for it tour day wise because we really haven't hit the road all all too much since then. We we had a really long stint over the summer where we were pretty much on tour for I don't know just over three months, I guess maybe a little bit maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, and then we had a nice, nice long break in the fall where uh, all we did was uh, do some some big festivals like Not Fest and and that sort of thing. And this is really our first um, venue tour in America, uh, actually anywhere that I can think of um, on this record, which is pretty cool. It's been a relatively quick record cycle in in terms of that. You know, we it came out in April and. Pretty much the day that it dropped, we were on tour, and we were on tour from then until the end of August. Um, and then uh, just a few shows in September, October, and now uh, we start off again. And like I said, this one being long, we're getting almost two months more of touring out of it here with this one. Oh, very much so. Uh, so, uh, also with that said, is there uh, plans to continue touring after this tour? Yeah, we're our goal, I think, uh, right now is to tour. America and, and Canada a lot. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, traveling overseas on the last two cycles doing everything from South America, uh, multiple tours in Europe, in the UK, Australia, um, even China and, and two tours in Japan. So we, we're looking forward to, uh, uh, I guess, getting back to our, our roots, if you can put it that way. Um, just doing a lot of uh, shows at home, a lot of American stuff would be cool for us. We, it's it's fun doing all the traveling, but we're, we're enjoying the the playing the venue shows at home now, so hopefully we'll be uh, doing a lot of touring in the States here this coming year. Of course, we would like to get back to Europe and the UK and, and all that sort of stuff, too, and I'm sure we will. I'm sure we'll cram that in schedule, too, but we're really looking forward to trying to 
get extra shows in America compared to the last couple of years. Oh, sure. And uh, this is actually going to be my second time seeing you guys. Uh, the first time was uh, when you were headlining at Station 4. So uh, long ago. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that like two with, and a half. Uh, Pierce the Veil? Or yeah. yeah. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. That, that was a sold-out show as well. Yeah. Yeah, we were actually just saying that Station... We've only played two places here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess we've played three. So much when we played a place called the Caboose once. So oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even recall what that one looked like, but I... It's, it's very... Uh, it's very long, but very short. It's I kind of like, remember the logo of the yeah. place. That's about all I can remember of yeah. it. But, uh, and then here in Minneapolis, we would always play... Uh, Station One, so it's cool. This is a new venue for us. Yeah, I think we I think we like this downtown uh, area a lot. It's a lot more going on than I th every, every time we've been to that venue in St. Paul as well. I think we mm -hmm. caught it on a rainy day mm -hmm. or a freezing snowy day. So uh, we have we have double the I guess double the good outlook on this venue now because we roll in for the first time and it's sunny, good weather, and uh, nice venue. Yeah, every time I interview bands here, they're always happy with the way Mill City Nights it's is cool. the it's atmosphere a really, where it is. It's a really cool area. I walked and got some pretty awesome wings earlier. So anytime you can pull that off and, and you don't even have to walk more than like 500 feet, it's a pretty good day. Oh, very much so. Uh, so uh, considering those, uh, uh, the last time I saw you in uh, tonight, you know, there's a difference between headlining and opening up for a band like Oxburn's Red. What, what do you guys normally prefer when it comes to something like that? Well, the, the set length is the biggest thing that changes. Um, you choose how long you play when you headline, obviously. So there is, no, there is no pressure for not fitting in certain songs that your fans want to hear. You have all the time. You, know, you don't have to worry about that. You can choose any, any set list you want. Whatever your fans want to hear, you have time to do it. Whereas on a support tour like this, you have, you have a much tighter schedule to fit in uh, and with us turning records over as quickly as we do having so many songs we have a lot of fans and a, and a couple different fan bases there so we got a lot of fans who have different opinions on what song they song they would like to hear and that's what makes the, su the support shows like tonight difficult because you know you obviously want to choose every song that's going to make every fan excited but on the support tours you just don't have the luxury of the time to play every song that all your fans want to hear. I think that's probably the biggest difference. No, it definitely makes a lot of sense. And, and along with that, of course, uh, supporting the new album, uh, what would you say has been the biggest changes from the last two album cycles? I think the, the type of bands that we tour with, I mean, obviously the, the CDs that we write, any, any fan that listens to the band will tell you we enjoy changing the sound of the band every record. Because as we grow as people, we're inspired by different bands. Just like as you grow up, as anyone who grows up and is listening to bands, you go through different bands that you enjoy listening to. and. Um, to, as we grow and we listen to different bands, it puts a different perspective on on how we view writing our music, and it kind of changes the sound on the record. And, and as a as a a record comes out and it might appeal to different people than you would on the record before, it gives you the opportunity to go on tour with different kinds of bands. So whereas the first two records really appealed to um, our early fan base, who we um, made off of doing tours like you saw us with Pierce the Veil, uh, We Came as Roman, Silverstein, uh, The Fans Warp Tour, that sort of thing. When we released, uh, At Heart kind of had a little bit of it. We still did a lot of the same kind of touring um, on the first half of that record, but the second half of that album cycle, and then pretty much most of Rise of the Lion, gave us the opportunity to go on tour with a lot of different style bands that you wouldn't have seen us play with. From going to Europe with uh, Trivium, going to the UK and Europe with Killswitch and Trivium, um, America with Five Finger Death Punch, once with Killswitch Engage, the Mayhem Festival, um, all of the major uh, festivals throughout the summer in May and June before we went to uh, Mayhem Festival. Uh, we did all those major festivals over in Europe. And you wouldn't have seen our band get an opportunity to do that kind of stuff on those first two records because they just didn't appeal to those crowds nearly as much. And that's, the, that's one thing we really enjoy about how things have gone for us in the last couple of years is 
though we might not be the hottest ticket in the Warped Tour scene right now, and we also might not be the hottest ticket in, in the Mayhem scene, we have a really pleasant blend of awesome fans from both sides, and it allows us to play with a lot of really cool different kinds of bands all throughout the year. So you can catch us with August Burns Red today, and you might catch us, you know, later down the road, you could see us with a band like, you know, if we got lucky, uh, I would love to see us on tour with a band like uh, Lamb of God or Back in America with somebody like Trivium. You know, it gives us the opportunity to bounce bounce around and play with a lot of really cool different types of metal bands. Oh, that is that very a, true. That was a long answer. <laughs> uh, not a problem with that. I, I like it when it goes into <laughs> detail like that. I mean, there's so much to learn from that. And, it, and it's so cool that you guys do have that kind of diversity where you, you can go from the Warp Tour or Mayhem and then you know, be able to tour with all the different bands that can go along with it. Yeah, and I think anybody who is coming up in bands, that's that's something in the back of your mind that you always want to be able to want to be able to do. You always want to be able to to perform with really cool different acts. Not only that you can learn from the acts and become better musicians, become uh, better entertainers, better at your job, but at the same time if you still love touring and you love seeing metal bands like all of us do, the more cool metal bands you get the opportunity to tour with, the more awesome free concerts that you get to attend all throughout the year because you're still getting the opportunity to go on tour with some of your favorite bands. And when you can bounce back and forth, it really broadens that horizon of bands that you're, that you're seeing out there that you could potentially tour with. Oh, very much so. And uh, you mentioned before uh, August Burns Red was one of the last few bands that you had left that you wanted to do venue tours with. Who, who else is on that list? Well, we, we had a big, a, a big list when we first started touring of, of the juggernauts of the, of the side of metal that we grew up in. You know, it was like August Burns Red was obviously a big one. Azalea Dying, Killswitch Engage, Trivium, um, Darkest Hour. There were so many uh, new wave of American metalcore bands, and then like the second wave, like August Burns Red, that got really big uh, by supporting all of those original bands. We had the opportunity to tour with so many of them. Um, you know, we've we've hit the road with Prada, Killswitch, ABR now, uh, Trivium, Darkest Hour, uh, the Asking Alexandria guys who blew up at the same time we did. You know, we've done multiple tours with those guys. Uh, Bless the Fall. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of these of these bands, but. August Burns Red is actually one that we hadn't ever played in a venue with. We had played Gros Rock Festival in Belgium one time, and we had played the Vans Warp Tour, which is, there's so many bands and it's so busy that a lot of the time if you don't uh, develop a, a, a relationship early on, you might not even get the chance to meet a band on that tour because there's so much going on. And I think with ABR, that's one of those things we weren't on the same stage. Um, you know, there's a what, 70 bands or something on that tour. Yeah, so I right. don't think we ever really linked up with them until um, till we got this opportunity. And, and that's why we were so excited because we, as big fans of the band, we, we would have loved to link up with them. We have a lot of friends who were already buddies with them who had acknowledged that they were one of their favorite bands to tour with. So it was, uh, it was really cool to, to check their name off the list. But as you check one band off, you're always adding three oh, more. Sure. You know, the, the list is just constantly growing. Uh, that, that's so cool to be able to say that you went on tour with so many bands that you grew up listening to and so many bands that you broke out with as well. That's really cool to see. Yeah, we've been really fortunate to, to play some great shows with a lot of really neat bands in our career, and uh, we, uh, <laughs> we will keep doing whatever it is that we got to do to have a good time and keep the fans happy and uh, keep doing cool shows like that. Very cool. Uh, so, e even though the album just came out last year, is there uh, any B-sides or any ideas that you have for the next album? I don't think we're going to do anything else with Rise of the Lion. Um, okay. I th uh, with that one, we had 14 tracks, including mm -hmm. the, the bonus tracks that went out to uh, the Best Buy release and the Target release, yeah. and 10 tracks on the record. Um, and the record did great. It, we had our highest first week. Um, ever and uh, you know we charted high all that all that uh, business behind the scenes you know kind of stuff the, the, the stressful part of the industry I guess you would say um, all of that was great and then making tons and tons of new fans off of that record um, on the Mayhem Festival was really cool so I think we're pretty well 
good with that record. Um, we're always writing, we're always setting up, um, getting demos done, working together. So I, I, I would like to see us hit the studio again soon, but we don't have anything to uh, announce officially at the moment. But like I said, we like to turn over records pretty quickly. You know, we, we enjoy going to the studio and writing and performing a record in the studio about as much as we enjoy going on tour. So whenever we uh, find the opportunity to go and, and create some new music and we know it's going to benefit ourselves and the, and the fans, we, we definitely try to get in there. Oh, very nice. So uh, along with that, I mean, is there any concrete ideas yet for what would be on the next album yet, or is it still just... Yeah, we have entire songs done. I mean, we, uh, I wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't make a record uh, in their current state. Like, they obviously still need uh, need some fine tuning and stuff, but we, we definitely have some songs done already, some, some strong ideas, and um, that's the cool thing about technology, uh, as we all Learn, a few of the guys have picked up on recording and have taught the other guys how to to demo efficiently and that's one that's a really cool thing right now is we're able to write through the whole year there's no more like setting aside time and you 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 have a studio running out and that's all you all you're doing at that time is going in and busting out an eight hour day of writing songs we you can casually write songs while you're comfortable all throughout the year now which has been pretty cool for us something that that's one thing that I don't think we ever did before we were always one of those bands who would always get together rent out a studio and write everything live you know the the, I, the old school way I guess you would put it now yeah. oh very cool well I'll definitely be looking forward to that as well and an amazing show here tonight which I know it'll be yeah it's going to be a good one tonight uh, uh, just to close this out is there anything else that you'd like to bring up that I have not brought up yet no, uh, thanks everybody for uh, picking up Rise of the Line if you have. Uh, check it out if you don't have it yet. And uh, we will be back. I can't tell you when yet, but I can tell you we will be back. Uh, we will be on tour pretty much all year. So uh, keep checking the sites and uh, check out the tour dates. And if you haven't seen us, come out Circle Pit with us. Oh, very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking time to do this interview. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I'm looking yeah, forward to a great show tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, once again, that was Ryan from Miss May. I go check out Rise of the Lion if you have not already. Uh, check out uh, this tour with August Burns Red if it's coming by you anytime soon. And be on the lookout for more dates with Miss May at the end of the year. Until then, this is That Drummer Guy. Thank you. <laughs>